That's drunk. Inspector Gadget for Super Nintendo is a pretty interesting game for a lot of reasons. For example, anyone that remembers the cartoon knows Gadget to be a bumbling doofus who just kinda lucks his way into solving cases while his niece Penny and her dog Brain bail him out at every turn. Of course, it'd be kinda difficult to coherently structure a game like this, especially back then, so what we get is a standard 2D action platformer with Gadget on a quest to save Penny after she gets kidnapped by Dr. Claw. And Gadget, for all intents and purposes, is a perfectly competent character here, using all all sorts of power-ups and various gadgets to help him defeat enemies across six levels. And the game does a good job representing the show, with one glaring exception I'll get to later. The settings here are straight from episodes out of the TV series, like King Tut's Tomb, Cuckoo Clock Maker's Clock Tower, and of course Dr. Claw's Castle. You've also got the Chief getting blown up a bunch of times too, you gotta love that. The development was handled by the same folks who worked on other licensed games like SWAT Cats and Fievel Goes West, and those games did a nice job representing their source material as well. The primary glaring flaw in Inspector Gadget, however, is... Where the hell is the Inspector Gadget theme music? It's seriously up there with Ninja Turtles as one of the catchiest and most memorable TV show themes ever, and they couldn't spring for it to be in the game? Such a bummer. Anyway, despite that, Inspector Gadget is actually a decent game, mostly due to all the power-ups you get to use. There's a propeller that enables Gadget to fly, there's an extendable hand coming out of your hat, there's suction cup arrows that help climb walls, and of course, there's a special item that extends the length of your arms and legs. The interface is smartly set up here too. Just press the L and R button to scroll through and A to activate. You get a limited amount of each item, however, and you have to collect hats for ammo, so to speak. The damage system is the same as Ghosts and Goblins. One hit loses your clothes, the second hit loses your life. While the power-ups are fun, the level design is hit or miss. Some levels are pretty straightforward, but some are just outright annoying, like this snow level where you have to contend with both slippery platforms and high-velocity winds? Come on! That part of the game is a chore to get through. There's other sections too, like outside King Tut's tomb in Egypt where you're just bouncing on these platforms, helplessly flailing around. It's this big sprawling layout and it can be tough to get a feel for where to go. No saves or passwords either. There are some interesting bits here though, like this boss fight that rotates the room around you, and there's plenty of hidden areas for you to find. Gadget has the ability to search for clues, you know, just like an inspector would, or at least a cartoon inspector. Just press down until Gadget takes out the magnifying glass to find hidden blocks that you can smash. To be honest, there's no real rhyme or reason to where these hidden areas might be, I mean this isn't exactly Donkey Kong Country 2, but it's still a nice addition that adds a bit of replay value. One other thing I should point out quickly is that for the final boss fight against Dr. Claw, they actually show his face. Wait, what? I don't think the cartoon ever actually did that. But yeah, you actually get to see Dr. Claw at the end of this game, so that's interesting. So yeah, Inspector Gadget is kind of middle of the pack. It's certainly better than painfully generic stuff like Tom and Jerry or the Pink Panther games, but it's nowhere near as good as, say, any of the Disney Capcom platformers. It's got a lot going for it, like all the special items, the boss fights, all the different settings from the TV show. And yeah, if you liked the cartoon growing up, you'll get a big kick out of this game. It's just that the controls can definitely feel way too slippery and sensitive at times, the level layouts seem to be way too big for their own good, and for God's sake, there's no Inspector Gadget theme. That's such a downer. Other than that glaring flaw, I'd say this one is worth checking out. And I want to thank you for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.